Hello, you're on Public Spot, I'm George. Welcome to a new episode on this series on refactoring Terraform modules. And today, I will be migrating my AWS Lambda Edge function, which I have attached to my CloudFront distribution resource, into CloudFront functions. And so if this series and the content of this channel lines up with your interests, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So, let's start coding. In the previous episode, I did a show and tell on how to write and set up Lambda Edge and integrate with CloudFront distribution resource. My use case for this setup was to allow for security related response headers to be set when my website is accessed. Following through this episode, I'll be converting my Lambda Edge function into CloudFront functions to achieve the same goal. My Lambda function does nothing but enriching the response headers on my requests that hit my website and it is not accessing any other AWS resources to perform some dynamic or critical processes, which means what this Lambda function attempts to do is exactly the same for any requests that flow through my website. Having said that, perhaps Lambda Edge is too much for my use case. And so I'm going to make this simpler and a lot closer to the CloudFront distribution resource by moving the functionality from AWS Lambda function into CloudFront functions. CloudFront functions have only been introduced last year, but the idea of it helps simplify the process of creating a pre or post processing component in the lifecycle of a web request. With Lambda Edge, I needed to create a Lambda function which publishes a version or replica that I can associate with the CloudFront distribution resource. This means there are two different AWS resources involved in the setup. And so when it comes to navigating through web console, you will need to switch between two services in AWS to be able to trace or maybe even troubleshoot any issues that involve this setup. On the other hand, a CloudFront function is created as part of the CloudFront resource in AWS, which means your CloudFront distribution and the CloudFront function are in one place. Before I start migrating from Lambda Edge to CloudFront functions, I'd like to point out one of many key differences between these two services that you need to keep in mind. Capacity and runtime wise, CloudFront function has very limited resources allocated to it compared to Lambda Edge. When I set up my Lambda function, I allocated 10 seconds of runtime before my Lambda execution and processing times out. CloudFront function is limited to a maximum of one millisecond. I also allocated the minimum memory of 128 MB for my Lambda function. However, CloudFront function can only have up to 2 MB that it can consume at runtime. So this is something that you need to keep in mind when you start using CloudFront functions on your use cases. I'm going to make the same set of changes inside my CDN resources on this repository that I have open in my VS Code session. And so let me expand the CDN directory and then open my main.tf. And then I'm going to head all the way to the end of this file. And then I will add a new resource block for my CloudFront function. I will set the basic properties for this resource to start with. And then I will set the runtime property. Currently, there is only one valid value for this property and that is cloudfront-js-1.0. So this is what I'm gonna set for this property. And then I will add the code property which will point to the JavaScript code that I want CloudFront function to execute. My function.js does not exist yet. So what I'm going to do is head to my VS Code Explorer and then copy my lambda.js file. And then I'm going to rename the copy to function.js. And 
And because this is not a lambda function, I need to make adjustments to this new JavaScript file. I'm going to change the handler into an explicit function definition and only have event as the parameter. I'm also going to update how I derive the response headers by extracting the response object directly from the event parameter. And then I'm going to change the variable signature and get rid of the reference to cons and replace that with a var. I also need to change how I set the actual response headers. Instead of passing a list value, I will change this to a simple map with only the value key. I need to do the same thing across all header parameters that I've set. I also need to replace the call to the callback function. Because the parameter is no longer passed, I will replace this to a return expression passing the response object back. And now back to my main.tf. And then I will head to my CloudFront resource. And on the cache behavior blocks, I will replace references to my Lambda Edge with a block that will reference my new CloudFront function. This function association block requires a property called event type. And then I'm going to set the value to viewer response. This block also requires a function ARN property, which I'm going to set to point to my new AWS CloudFront function resource. And now I'm all set to update my infrastructure. So let me head to my VS Code terminal. I will export my TF workspace environment variable, which is what I use to differentiate my Terraform workspace names. And then I will initialize my AWS credentials on this session using AWS Vault. If you want to know more how I set up AWS Vault, check out this episode right here. And now I'm going to navigate to the Telegram directory and start running Telegram run all apply to update my infrastructure stack. This prompt is asking me if I want to run Telegram apply on each of the folder inside the Telegram directory. So I'm going to say yes on this prompt. Now that my infrastructure has been updated, let me switch to my browser, open the developer tools, and with my network tab enabled, I'm going to go ahead and access sonar.publospot.ml. And then if I select the first entry in here, inside my network tab, 
and then head to the response headers section. My security response headers are still intact. And that's all I have for today. Stay tuned as I continue to explore ways of refactoring my Terraform modules. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.